Hi, Rick Roslin here, and today I want to talk about fossils. And Indiana is famous for fossils. We have some of the best fossils in the world, right here in Indiana. And a fossil is really preserved evidence of past life. And if you think about that sentence, a fossil is preserved evidence of past life. Preserved means it's saved. Evidence is a clue. And past, well, that's where paleontologists, those, that's the people who study fossils. And so when you hunt and collect and study fossils, you're a paleontologist. When a paleontologist thinks about past, some of them think that maybe 10,000 years or older is needed before it's a fossil. And finally, life. That's plants or animals or the evidence of plants or animals. So most of the things you see right here are fossils, preserved evidence of past life. And fossils form in lots of different ways. And one of my favorite fossils is this fish right here. This fish came from Wyoming. And when Wyoming used to be an ocean millions of years ago, and when this fish died, two things happened really quickly. One, it got buried. No light, no oxygen, and two, it wasn't eaten by other animals. It was preserved. And over millions of years, that bottom ocean floor of mud probably turned into shale and then a hard rock, and the bones and actual tissues that were in the fossil were replaced by minerals. And so now you have preserved evidence of past life, kind of like a snapshot back in time. But this one, these came from Indiana. This is a cephalopod, and usually on a cephalopod or any fossil, only the hard parts will be preserved. Like I always tell, if, if I died and was in the ground, and what would probably be preserved, maybe after 10,000 years, would be my teeth and my bones, my flesh, my skin, my guts, my hair, gone. So fossils are the harder parts that are usually preserved, or the imprints. Now this, this is kind of cool. I love, this is a, a, a necklace over many years ago going in the creeks of southern Indiana. These are crinoids, and a crinoid was actually an animal. And we know that because we can find the entire crinoid stem, the head, and the calyx, and in fact, some of the most famous fossils in all the world come from Crawfordsville, Indiana. You can go to museums all over, around the world and find crinoids from Indiana. Uh, this one, though, this one, one of my favorites. Here is a megalodon tooth. Mega, big, odon tooth. A shark, a prehistoric shark, about a little bit smaller than a school bus, that swam in the waters when dinosaurs roamed on the land. Trilobites from Morocco, and one of my favorites, a cast. Now, this is, a, uh, this is not the actual tooth of a T-Rex, but it's a replica made out of the cast. They took the actual tooth, imprinted it in a special clay, and took it out, filled it with a hard plastic. And now I can study this and share this with children. And uh, that's why they nicknamed Lethal Banana. You know, we have lots of fossils. In fact, if you want to see some fossils, you can find your own in Southern Indiana. Places like Brookville or Morgan Monroe are great places to look for fossils or you can go to the Indiana State Museum, which has an amazing collection of fossils from Indiana. And if you really want to see some dinosaurs, go to the Dinosphere at the Children's Museum in Indianapolis, a great world-class museum. So we have fossils everywhere. But you can actually make a fossil model. Scientists use models all the time. And so what I did with this, I took some clay and I uh, actually pressed some seashells into the clay mixed up some fossil mud, plaster of Paris, poured it over it, let it set, and eventually, after a little bit, you open it up and you have a mold and a cast, a mold and a cast, which is pretty cool. In fact, if you go on a trip to Southern Indiana, you can find brachiopods, bryozoan, or bring home something like this, which is a bottom of the sea floor over 400 million years ago when Indiana was part of a larger continent that was in tropical waters. We know that because these type of creatures live in a less than 100 feet of water and you needed sunshine and warmth. 
And so that is really cool. But you can find all these fossils, brachiopods, bryozoan, horned corals, right here in Indiana. I got a couple of other things I'd like to show you. This is a, these two are the toe bones. These came from South Dakota, toe bones from an Amontosaurus. See, dinosaurs are named three ways. Whether, you know, the three ways are who found them, uh, where they're found, or what they look like. And the first fossil of this creature right here, a duckbill dinosaur that T-Rex ate, Edmontosaurus, was found in Edmonton in Canada, and that's what it's named after. And there's a toe bone, I should say the fossilized toe bone of its toe and its next little flange coming up right here. And I'll tell you though, I have some amazing fossil here. This one is from Southern Indiana, and this was right above the coal. Coal is a fossil fuel. It is the remains of the carbon in the trees in the swamp from millions of years ago. And so sometimes those leaves are preserved. And I want to show you this guy right here. Check it out. When I open it up, you won't believe it. That is amazing. A cast and a mold of a beautiful fern leaf. And I guess I got to say, uh, <laughs> The fossil that kids like the most is this guy right here. Hmm, let's see. Let's see. Looks kind of interesting. Feels kind of interesting. Smells kind of interesting. Only one thing to do, a field test. Yep, tastes like a rock. Yep, that's a corpolite. The preserved evidence of past life. Prehistoric. Uh, Actually, it's the, uh, the droppings of maybe a prehistoric turtle, maybe a dinosaur, I don't know. But it's now a preserved rock. Hey, go out, hunt for fossils, be a paleontologist.